I'm going to leave that here. If, leave I, fall, there, take it with you. I, if I fall, I fall. <laughs> I was just thinking as Brother Shook was singing, and uh, I pastored in Great Bend, Kansas, and it had to be 1974. Must be doing something wrong. In 1974, that uh, I first had him in one of the churches I pastored. So that's been 40 some years ago. And uh, I had some wind back then. And I could be called a long winded preacher. <laughs> that has uh, passed me by of late, and uh, I've got some fluid on my lungs. So I'm supposed to take it off, and I'm supposed to be able to do better when the smoke clears, too. So pray for us. My last three, four months has not been as easy as months as I can ever remember. And uh, although I got a, a better report from the doctor this last week, and uh, that encouraged us. But uh, I'm here tonight because God loves me and he saved me and uh, calls me to preach. And uh, I'm not the best preacher you're ever going to hear, but I'm not the worst. <laughs> So you can write that in the book. First John in chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye may ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Our Father, bless. I know it's not going to be long tonight. I trust it'll be full, and that you'll speak to hearts, and that folks will understand what they have in this one called Jesus. In his name we ask it. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus Christ is God incarnate in the flesh. In John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's something, dear folks, that we have to lay hold of on is that this one existed from eternity. In Isaiah, God said, my, I am the Lord, and that is my name. My glory I'll not share with another. But under the sun, he saith in Hebrews 1.8, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. And so this one that God said, I'll not share glory with any is the same one 
that was in the beginning. And so he exists as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, there are those, and I'm... Sometimes you have part-timers. And there's a verse, some verses there, I think it's in 1 John chapter 6 or chapter 5. Just a minute. Now, chapter 5, they're saying those verses ought not to be there. And there are people who will spend time saying they are there, and this is why you ought to believe it. And some say they're not there, and that's why you ought not to believe it. And what I say, it's in this book. It's in this book. And that's what God says, and I'm going to take it at his word. And uh, I want to talk to you tonight just briefly about a personal relationship with the God of heaven. There's a lot of Christians who know they're saved, and uh, there's a lot of people who are saved, but they never, ever had a personal relationship with God. And that's so important. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. In 1 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 12, or chapter 1, verse 12, Paul said, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. It's not some sin that I'm talking about. It's me. I belong to him, and uh, he belongs to me. And uh, there was a time in my life, June 19th, 1953, when the light bulb turned on, and I understood that God loved me and he would take me just as I was and save me. And I remember that night, and dear friends, I cannot go beyond this. There was something that happened that night. I used to sing, something happened, and I can't... Uh, when I, something happened when I gave my heart to Jesus. And uh, I wish I could bring that up. But anyhow, I can tell you this. As I look at 1 John chapter 1 here, he talks about that which was from the beginning. You'll not get saved unless you believe that Jesus is God incarnate. And I can imagine John walking down the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and uh, he heard a commotion. And there he saw something, and uh, he looked and he said, that which was from the beginning, that's the Savior. That's the one eternal and uh, the one that I came to know and love. And... Uh, he said, that which we have heard. And oh, there's so many beautiful stories and, and things that we can put into our hearts and lives of this wonderful one. And he said, I heard him. And, and, and then he says, I, which I've seen with my eyes. And I think about what it would have been like to look up and see the Lord Jesus walking and uh, yeah. scratch your head for a while. Who's this? What's going on? And I've seen it. And then he said, that which we looked upon 
I not only saw him, but I stopped and I paid attention and I watched and then my hands have handled and the Word of God, that precious Savior. And Paul said, or John said, for the life was manifested, and we've seen it, and we bear witness unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto this, and that which we have seen, and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with God the Father, or and truly our fellowship with God the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, Brother Young, I'm going to do something for a few minutes, and I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to sit down. Uh, I hate that, not being able to just get up and romp and stomp and do what I'm supposed to do. But uh, if I was Jewish tonight, and uh, I wouldn't mind being a Jew, I'd be blessed. But if I'm a Jewish man or a woman, and I want to pray to God. I have to pray to God with a prayer somebody else wrote. And it starts out usually, oh God of the universe, and uh, describes this God. But it's a God that they really don't know. There's no personal relationship. Uh, he could not say, like Peter and Satan Peter, that he was a partaker of the divine nature and that he could talk to God any time he wanted to. Even the, the, the Catholics and the Episcopalians and uh, some Lutherans and a fellow who preached a memorial service for a dear friend the other day he had a written prayer. I want to have a personal Amen. relationship. And I want you to have a personal relationship with him. And to do that, you need to know who he is. And he came for a purpose. And he came to save you. And... Uh, Oh, he came to save everybody here. But I can say this, that he came to save me. Amen. And I can remember how wonderful a night that was and how God changed me. And uh, friends, my, Pat and I have a, a ritual. We've been married for so long. that I don't know if it's a ritual or what it is. But she gets up in the morning, and it's kind of slowed down of late, but uh, usually the you know, coffee's made, and I, I grab uh, two cups of coffee and my uh, ice pack, and sometimes I have to put it down because it's too cold. I'll have to go back and get it. But then we sit down, and we have our personal time, and relationship, and read the Word of God. And folks, sometimes when I'm reading this book and I come on something and I have to do as I'm reading, all of a sudden the wonder and the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ fills my heart and uh, I have to act a little strange. I have to Amen. Uh, and praise the Lord. And uh, I don't know what to do if there was another God. 
that I could know and love. I've, uh, my doctor the other morning, now I'm just yakking at you. I went to, well, I went to see our own personal doctor. I have a cancer somewhere. It's, I first heard that it was in the bile duct and went to the pancreas is now in my lungs. But the oncologist said, we really don't know what it's doing. We know it's in the bile duct, but it hasn't moved. And uh, so, but he's, what, what my own personal doctor said, you'll be in heaven before Christmas. And he loves the Lord. And that wasn't very encouraging. Oh, it was. But, the, you know, if, to be absent, be absent from the body is be present with the Lord, that'd be okay. But I have a wife that I'm concerned about. And uh, I want to leave her as best as I can. But I can tell you this. That me, me, my wife and I have, I have a personal relationship. The only time that thing comes in danger, when I'm driving or she's driving. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, sometimes it goes on in that car whether you, you think whether we're saved or not. Uh, but uh, I tell you this. Jesus said, and God said it, it's not copied by, by Jude from some other book. It was given to him from God, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. Now he can do that for Brother Dotson. And I, I know he will. And that's important to him. Yes. And that's and that's important to Brother Young. And uh, that's so important to me. Amen. It's important to me that he knows who I am. And he can present me faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. And see, it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And the joy of the Lord is the fact that I'm saved and he knows who I am. And I ha he has a claim on my life. And I can say to you this evening that I know him as my personal Savior. And I know he cares for me. And I look out over this crowd and I do not know much I know a lot of you, and I love you all, and you've been so good. But I want to be able to say that I've preached unto you the wonderful gospel of Christ. And the Bible says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, and to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'm going to quit. Uh, because I've just been rambling, but I've been rambling what God has put in my heart. I was 17 years of age. Let me back up a little bit. I lost my father when he was 45 years old. Uh, I was lost, but in the eighth grade, or ninth grade, I guess, and uh, was a pretty good basketball player and had, if I'd have stayed where I was, I'd probably been all right. But uh, I really didn't have a purpose for life. And I joined the United States Navy Reserves. And that was when they were out at Buckley Naval Air Station, which is now the National Guard. But I joined the Navy out there. And uh, I was never, I never liked 
the taste of beer or whiskey or wine. There was something that was offensive. But I was told by friends, Ron, you ain't never lived until you'd been drunk. And I thought, but I've tried everything else. I'm going to try that. And so I decided, well, they were going to give us 17-year-old sailors all we could drink. And uh, so I said, this is as good a place to do it as, as any. And I started to, to drink a beer, and I got it down. And then I ate a piece of, or two sandwiches and a piece of chocolate cake with this ooey-gooey frosting on it. And then I tried to drink another beer, and I took swallow, two swallows, and some of it, I, I had to hope it didn't come back up. And uh, here's what happened. I looked at myself, and I said, there's got to be more to life than this. I went to a church that had its own camp at Silver State. It wasn't a Baptist church, and uh, it really went far away from what it was then. But I went, we went to Silver State Baptist Youth Camp, and uh, a man preached the gospel, and he said, just as I am, that's how God wants you. And that night, I got saved. I had a personal Savior. And he called me to preach three nights later. And I didn't even have a high school education. I, I had to become the, the breadwinner at 16 and a half years of age. And uh, so I didn't have a high school education. And uh, somebody said, well, you can go to college on a GED. And so I went and got that dude. <laughs> and that's how I went to college on a GED. And I finished Bible college and got ordained into the gospel ministry to tell you that you can have a personal relationship Amen. with the God of heaven that I have and that you can know in whom you have believed and that you are persuaded and that one day you'll come into his presence and you'll say it in your heart, uh, I haven't lived like I ought to. But you can remember that night that you said, Oh, Lord Jesus, save me. And that's a guarantee. But I want to have more just a memory of being born again. I want to have a memory I'm saying, I've done what I can. I've done what I, what I trust you have wanted me to do. And I've tried to honor and glorify you in my life and be a testimony. And listen, I've got convictions that I've had since 1953, and they've not gone away. And I'm convinced that he is my Savior, that I have a God to whom I can talk to, and I have a God that one day will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, yes. and uh, that I can look up and I can say, hey, I know who you are, and you know who I am, and I have a personal relationship. And I want you to get that personal relationship. Now, you can't have such until you get saved. Yes. And you can't get saved until you become convinced that you're a sinner. Because John R. Rice preached a sermon one time, sinners only. That's the only one that's going to be heaven. And Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I'm chief. 
and he wants to save you. And you have to realize that you sinned against the holy God and that as Romans 7 tells us, that that sin must become exceeding sinful. It must be something that you can say, I know I'm a sinner and I want you to save me and I want to be rid of this sin idea and a partaker of the divine nature so I can add to my faith that virtue which is spiritual excellence and I can add to virtue the knowledge that I need to know and uh, you study that through the word of God. I, I know a lot more about the Bible than I did when I started and uh, I can add to my virtue knowledge and attempt and uh, to knowledge temperance and that means letting him have control and temperance godliness I want to be like Jesus and to godliness brotherly kindness and I tell you that's a lacking thing in some places and to godliness the love that God has given and I want to be able to say my Jesus, I love thee. And uh, how's that? I wish I had those words. Faith, uh, I say, I love thee, Lord Jesus, with all of my heart. I love thee, Lord Jesus, with all of my heart. For dying on Calvary, for giving me victory, I love thee, Lord Jesus, with all of my heart. And I do, and I hope you do, and that if you're not saved, why don't you settle that tonight? Make sure that he's your Savior. And then settle this. Lord, I want to know you. The power of your resurrection. I kind of hinged on this next one. And the fellowship of your suffering. I don't like that suffering. But there's a fellowship in that. And uh, I want to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I know him. And I trust you do. And preacher, I don't know what you, brother, you're going to do the rest. And I'm just going to sit here and you take over. Ordained in 1967. Ordained in 1967. I think I, and you need to understand these are AIDS, not cures. <laughs> so I may, I may not have catch, caught everything you said. <laughs> a little while. He's been in the ministry a little while. Yes. And, um, you know, w with time and with experience, there's a lot of wisdom that he could have shared with us. But he shared with us probably the most important thing, Jesus. Amen. Amen. He shared with us the most important thing, one that we can know him and have a real personal relationship with him. And not only that, but so that we can also make him known. Yes. For sure, for sure. Thank you, Brother Draper. Hey, let's all stand. As the piano's going to play during a time.